Hang on here just a second, folks. I'm waving for our lightning fast printer, and it is. Uh, to print something I need here, and we'll get going here. Come. Still waiting patiently. See, the data has to be compiled, and then it has to be spooled, and then it... All right, here we go. Trump has been tweeting all during the Hillary speech. Trump is his own rapid response team. Doesn't need a campaign manager to do this stuff. Well, I say that. I'm looking at some of these tweets, and they're okay, but they could be better. They could be better. Somebody should have been tweeting what I was saying. Anyway, the the Trump. Let me let me share with you some of the tweets that Trump uh, fired off during Hillary's speech. And again, we were rolling on it. We'll have some audio highlights of it. It was outrageous. It, it was it was a typical Hillary slash liberal Democrat speech on economics. It was as wrong and, frankly, as dangerous as it could be. And it mischaracterized Trump. And it mischaracterized the, the opponents of Democrats and what they want to do. And it was the same old thing. Uh, Hillary and the Democrats going to protect the poor and the middle class. Well, they're putting them out of work. They're putting coal miners out of work. They're putting union workers out of work. The Democrats and their economic policies are causing 94 million Americans not to work. But the Democrats are feeding them. And the Democrats are paying for their cell phone coverage. So I guess it's okay. Anyway, here's some of Trump's tweets as Hillary was making her speech. And it says that this is the, the bottom up. Uh, I'll be making a big speech tomorrow to discuss the failed policies and bad judgment of crooked Hillary. Hillary says this election's about judgment. She's right. Her judgment has killed thousands, unleashed ISIS, and wrecked the U.S. economy. Hillary Clinton surged the trade deficit with China 40% as Secretary of State, costing Americans millions of jobs. How can Hillary run the economy when she can't even send emails without putting the entire nation at risk? Hillary Clinton's open borders immigration policies will drive down wages for all Americans and make everybody less safe. Obama Clinton inherited $10 trillion in debt and turned it into nearly $20 trillion. They have bankrupted. That's an Instagram, by the way. And the last tweet, tweet that I have that Trump sent out, I am the king of debt. That's been great for me as a businessman, but it's bad for the country. I made a fortune off of debt, but I'm going to fix America. Now she ripped into him for bankruptcies and uh, ignoring creditors and so forth and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, debt's been great for me as a businessman. Debt is one of those things, uh, depending on your position, and your creativity and your guts, uh, death, death, debt is something that that you can. A lot of people, you know, J.P. Morgan, John Pierpoint Morgan. You ought to read about this guy, J.P. Morgan of J.P. Morgan Chase. J.P. Morgan was at one point the richest man in the world when the United States government needed money, when the Treasury, they went to him. And he was one of the biggest believers in debt, other people's debt, that you could ever have. Everybody and their uncle owed J.P. Morgan. He was such a huge believer in debt. Other people's, not his. But in some cases, you know what debt is, is at its essence is other people's money. And if you have the ability, if sometimes going in debt is a cheaper way to acquire and spend money than spending your own. Apple computer, Apple Incorporated is a classic example. Apple is paying dividends. Apple's buying back their shares. Let me just, I won't spend much time on this, but just to give you an idea. Here's a company with 200 to $250 billion just sitting in cash and cash instruments all over the world. Now, two-thirds of it is all over the world. They can't bring it back without paying a 35% corporate tax 
to Uncle Sam. So that $250 billion, rough numbers here, 70% of it is overseas. Yet they want to buy back shares. They, they want to issue dividends to stockholders. So you might think, okay, well, they got $250 billion, just take it out of there. But for them, it's cheaper to sell bonds, to sell debt in Taiwan and other parts of Asia in order to finance their buybacks rather than to go into their own stash because of what would happen to the growth rate of their stash, their growth rate combined with whatever they're earning off of it. If they reduce the principal, which is what they'd be doing, then it would, it would slow the growth rate of that stash. Plus, they can't bring, they, they can't use any of the foreign money for buybacks. So it's really not $200 billion they have. So they, they issue bonds and, and debt you know, twice a year, every time they want to up their buybacks and pay dividends. And they end up making money out of it because Apple is considered to be such a golden place that people run out and buy that debt. They run out and buy the bonds that, that Apple uh, ends up issuing. So it's an example here. If you know what you're doing and you have the ability, you can make huge money borrowing it using other people's money. Uh it's, unfortunately, uh, it's it's not everybody that can play that way. But if you if you're suited, if you're financially set in certain ways, then you can do that, and it makes all the sense in the world. So that's what Trump's mean. Trump means he's you know he's made a fortune off of it. But the United States government is not an entity that operates like a business in that sense. The debt for the United States is horrible. It's damaging in in so many ways, and eventually it's going to come due. Uh, and that's all that he is acknowledging. Let's go to the Trump audio sound bites, And in doing so, we'll get some of the information in the CNN poll that has so many in the drive-by media upset today. This is the Today Show today that Trump was there. And they're talking about the firing of, of, uh, of Lewandowski. And Matt Wauer said, look, he's the guy that believed in let Trump be Trump. Let Trump speak his mind. And, and that got you a lot of success, Donald, during the primaries. Now, does this signal with Lewandowski gone that you're not going to do the let Trump be Trump anymore? That you're somehow going to change your tone for the general election? I have to be who I am. I don't want to be a phony like a Hillary Clinton where she reads stuff that's uh, written up by high-priced uh, talent. I don't want to be that. I want to be what I am. And new polls just came out, and I'm right there. I'm right, you know, with the horrible few weeks I have from the press. I mean, the press is treating me unbelievably unfairly. And with all of that bad press that I've had over the last couple of weeks, believe me, that's manufactured press, 100%. I've had days where there should have been good deals and good days, and the press comes out negatively. With all of the press, I'm right there in the poll. CNN just announced the poll. I'm right there. It, well, he's, he's right. The, the CNN poll, it shows Hillary up. No, I'm not, don't misunderstand, but remember, we're, we're measuring two things. There was a poll, the poll prior to this, whenever it was, last week or late the week before, that was devastating for Trump, and overall it had her up 11 and him losing ground. The CNN orc poll is an entirely different thing. It's got him tied with her in certain battleground. The battleground states, he's looking good. And the largest margin she has anywhere is three points. And when you get down to that question on the economy, who better to deal with the economy? Trump kills it, 41-48. And it's not good for Hillary based on where they think they should be. Look, they think they're running against an absolute idiot. They think they're running against a guy that knows what he's doing, who's going to step in it, put his foot in his mouth three or four times a day. He doesn't have a campaign staff of anybody with an experience on it. He's not got any money. He hasn't fundraised. By all accounts, using the standard everyday political playbook, the guy ought to be defeated by now. It's all over, but actually having the election. She ought to be so dramatically ahead. The contrast ought to be so clear, and it isn't. And remember, these are the people who believe you'll win it all in June. They're even being open in saying that. And they have not put Trump away in June. And believe me, the money to people that, that live and, and breathe in this political world, money is the defining factor on everything. It's not issues. It's not policy. That comes second. Money. He who has the money is going to win the day. And particularly, he or she who has the money right now 
wins the day. And the way that manifests is um, four years ago is a good example. Romney had over $100 million in the bank, but he couldn't spend any of it because it was all raised for the general election campaign, which kicks in after the conventions. Well, Obama had raised billions of dollars throughout his first term, had all kinds of money from PACs and any number of associated assistants, and they were able to run vicious, mean-spirited, lying sack of garbage ads against Romney from about June through the conventions. He couldn't, he didn't have the money to respond to it and didn't, and therefore the Democrats believe that they defined Romney and won the election in June. That's when they had him not caring about the family dog on the roof of the station wagon. of That's when they had him not caring that some employee's wife died of cancer. That's when they had him you know, doing bully tricks in, in boarding school. That's when they had Romney characterized as a, as a rich guy that doesn't care about anybody else, distant and aloof, and acknowledges that 47% of the country hates his guts. All of that stuff happened in June. So they believe that's where they win the election. And they thought that was going to happen this year because Trump didn't even have any money, even if he had it. They still think they could they could win, but he doesn't have it, so he can't possibly respond. Another, another rule of thumb that they're saying is, and I think you have to throw this out, uh, at least to a certain extent, because Trump is not part of the standard daily political procedural playbook. It's one thing they, they don't get to their heads. But if you have two professional politicians and they're playing it by the book, meaning they're running campaigns based on what their consultants tell them they have to do and when they have to do it, then one of the, one of the paramount objectives, in addition to defining your opponent in June, is oh come on, it just slipped my mind. Was it? Uh, you know what? This is an important point, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna vamp here while I try to. Let me take a break, and it will come to me in the, because it's along the same lines as defining your opponent in June. There's certain things. Oh, it's on the verge of tip my tongue. Let me take a break. We'll, I'll lead with it when I get back after the break. Don't go. Okay, I just got the Hillary Clinton sound bites, so we got to work those in here. What what I was the second point that I was going to make? You've heard this, and this is SOP, standard operating procedure in traditional presidential campaigns, and I'm sure that uh, it's relevant. And it's this: that once you get past the primaries and into the general, nationwide campaigning is a waste of time and a waste of money. Because all that matters in the presidential campaign is winning states. Therefore, Trump can no longer, this is the theory, Trump can no longer rely on being on 15,000 different television shows every week. He can't count on being on Fox in the morning, then MSNBC the same morning, then CNN later, and then all three networks at night, even if he did it every day. You cannot win the presidency doing that. You have to have a lot of money, and you have to target your advertising in swing states where you are polling well. States that you can possibly win that have significant electoral votes which is how you win the presidency, the Electoral College. So, but that is standard operating theory. And 99 out of 100 elections, it's true. And I think it's true in this case, too. Trump is going to have to do some of that. But the idea that it's a waste of time for Trump to continue to do all this media, that's bogus as well. That's what got him here. You know, I, I ran in a lot of... Trump fans uh, over the weekend out of Southern California. You know what the most disappointing thing about, I mean, they were, they were facing, not facing, they were experiencing a little letdown. And you know what it was about? They miss Trump. They like these Trump events. They like turning on the TV, watching Trump make his speech and going out there and hitting whoever he's hitting. They haven't seen him in four weeks. All they've seen is Trump go after the Mexican judge and it's it's let them down a little and it's it's led them to 
you know, fall prey to the media mantra that Trump's run his course, that there is nothing more. Trump doesn't have any money, doesn't have any professionals running his campaign, that he's basically run out of energy and he's run out of moxie and so forth. And there was a lot of grumbling amongst a lot of Trumpists. And so I think that's how it manifests itself. I heard them say, I just wish Trump would go out and be Trump. I said, I asked them point blank. Is what you miss the show? You just miss Trump being on TV, taking it to people and doing what he did in such an unconventional way? Or do you actually miss the substance of what he was doing? And they said, well, both. But I had one guy said, the first part is, is crucial to who he is, right? Look, it is a show. There's no question that Trump's voters are an audience. There's no question it's a show. He's got to keep that up. Do you guys agree with that? You're a Trumpist in there. And uh, some of them are. Now they're nodding their heads in, uh, in agreement. Uh, okay, well, if you believe that, then you would also agree that Trump would not hurt himself if he kept doing that kind of thing. The drive-bys are trying to talk him out of doing that and get him, you know, go out and hire the next consultant you can have, go out and hire a professional, go out and hire a manager, and then raise money and spend it in these states and run a campaign like everybody else has run a campaign. And Trump's instincts are not to do that. And I think he's got to follow. That's what I've always said. He's got, he's, he's got, he's got to be who he is. You just, I, it, it is a business, it, it is a business and it has its requirements, but it's also evolving. Politics and showbiz are becoming more and more linked by virtue of our cultural evolution. And the cutting edge societal evolution, L. Rushmo, serving humanity, executing assigned host duties flawlessly. All right, look at. I got to do it. I got to give you a flavor of Mrs. Clinton's speech trashing Trump and the economy today. We're going to start. Grab a, a soundbite number 22. She was uh, in Columbus, Ohio. And this was a highly touted speech on the economy. Uh, and and an, uh, a subset of it was an attack on Trump and his lack of qualification to be president, his lack of the temperament and his economic ignorance and incompetence. So that was what the subject was. And here's the first. We actually have one, two, three, four, five of these things. I don't know if I can stomach that many, but here, people here's are working harder and longer just to keep their heads above water. Stop, stop and to deal with the cost, the everyday. That. I want you to remember now, for the last seven and a half years, Barack Hussein O and the Democrat Party have been running this economy and running this country with virtual no opposition from the Republicans. And you're going to listen and you're going to think, if you don't know any better, that her party's had nothing to do with anything, that a Republican may as well be president. It's that bad, and we need to elect her to fix all these things that have gone wrong. But you don't forget when you listen to this who the president is and what party it is that has been running this show and this economy and everything else pretty much into the ground. People are working harder and longer just to keep their heads above water. And to deal with the costs, the everyday costs, the costs of basics like childcare and prescription drugs that are too high. College is getting more expensive every day. And wages are still too low. And inequality is too great. Good jobs in many parts of our country are still too hard to come by. Now these problems are serious, but I know we can overcome them together. I really believe in this country because I believe in the American people. Ah, what a crime. America's economy isn't yet where we want it to be. Really? After seven and a half years and you're not proposing anything differently? You're just going to continue what's been done? I mean, I think she's undermined her whole premise right here in her open. She admits that the economy that Democrats have been running for eight years is a disaster. 
Nobody can get the job they want. Nobody's wages are going up. What? There, there's, there's nothing to recommend her because she is an agent of consistency. She's not going to do anything differently than got us here. Then what got us here? But the media is going to point this out. And people go, yeah, yeah, you go, Hillary. We need to prove it. They're not going to stop to think that it's her own philosophy, liberalism, socialism, whatever it is. They got us here. So with that in mind, here's the um, next. Get, get this one. Just like he shouldn't have his finger on the button, he shouldn't have his hands on our economy. All right, they're pretty big hands, I think. Now, I don't say that because of typical political disagreements. B.S. Liberals and conservatives say Trump's ideas would be disastrous. The Chamber of Commerce and labor unions. Mitt Romney and Elizabeth Warren. Economists on the right and the left and the center all agree Trump would throw us back into recession. We're not even out of it yet. This is the thing. We haven't even gotten to a real recovery. There has not been a real recovery. You can't convince me that we've got a real recovery when 94 million Americans are not working and the number gets added to every year. But you see, hey, don't just believe me. Don't believe me. Elizabeth Warren agrees with Mitt Romney. And the Republicans in the Chamber of Commerce, they also think, you know the way to translate this? We in the establishment, Mitt Romney, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Elizabeth Warren, all of us in the elite establishment, we think an outsider like Trump would be an absolute disaster. Here's the next Hillary sound. Over like the Hillary. years, he has said all kinds of things about women in the workforce. He once called pregnant employees, and I quote, an inconvenience. He says women will start making equal wait, wait, pay. Wait, 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 wait. Pregnant women are an inconvenience to Planned Parenthood until they can convert them to an opportunity. That's what I would have tweeted back. What do you mean? Pregnancy. Trump has said pregnant employees are an inconvenience. It's going to resonate with business owners. But they're also pregnant people are an inconvenience to Planned Parenthood until they convert them to an opportunity. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist that. This is it, what as I would soon do. as we do as good a job as men, as if we weren't already. That's a, He clearly you know, doesn't know much about how we have grown the economy over the last 40 years, which is largely thanks to women getting into the workforce and adding to family incomes. Oh, man, what a sitting duck hanging curveball that comment is. Can we take a stab at it? All right. Over the years, he has said all kinds of things. Actually, she's not sounding shrill. Probably ought to shut up about that so she goes back to it. Anyway, uh, over the years, he said all kinds of things about women in the workforce. He only puts them in the most powerful positions in his company, Hillary. The woman that built Trump Tower ran that project where he lives. A woman. A woman. Women are all over Trump's organization. And they, they're paid much more than you pay them in your office, Hillary. I mean, it's not even close, Hillary. Women in Hillary's office make 70% what men do. He once called pregnant employees, and I quote, an inconvenience. He said, women will start making equal pay as soon as we do as good a job as men. You don't pay women equally, Hillary. This has been documented. Women in Hillary Clinton's Senate office, campaign office, uh, where she's paying them, and they're not government salaries. They make 70, 75% what the men do. He clearly doesn't know how about how much we've grown the economy the last four. Hillary, you haven't participated in economic growth. You, you have opposed everything that led to economic growth, starting with Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. You have opposed everything that led, unless you wanted to find tax increases as growing the economy, which is largely thanks to women getting into the world. Why did women get, she wants to claim feminism for this. You know why women got in the workforce? You want to know why they really got in the workforce? Because of the need for two incomes 
because of Democrat Party income tax policies and other tax. That's why. 